The God Protocol by Sam Gerrans, published 2021. See coronite.com. Chapter 5 Hood Hood, the messenger to Ard. The story of Hood and the people of Ard follows that of the people of Noah chronologically, and a short current introduction to the subject is supplied below. Quote, Judaism and Christianity do not venerate Hood as a prophet, and, as a figure, he is absent from the Bible. However, there are several pre-Quranic references to individuals named Hud or possessing a name which is connected to Hud, as well as references to the people of Ard. End quote. From Wikipedia as of March 2021. The Quranic narrative treating of Hud bears the common stamps. A man warns the ruling elite of the community to which he belongs. Rejection of that man's message by the people to whom he is sent that people's subsequent destruction at the hand of God. We list seven principal segments in this chapter and provide any commentary in note form below. Segment 1. And to Ad, their brother Hud, he said, O my people, serve God, you have no God but he. Will you then not be in prudent fear? Said the eminent ones who disbelieved among his people, we see thee in foolishness, and we consider thee a liar. He said, O my people, there is no foolishness in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of all creation. I convey to you the messages of my Lord, and I am a sincere counsellor to you, one trustworthy. Do you marvel that there has come to you remembrance from your Lord, through a man among you, that he should warn you? And remember when he made you successors after the people of Noah, and increased you in creation abundantly. Then remember the favours of God, that you might be successful. They said, Hast thou come to us that we should serve God alone and leave what our fathers served? Then bring thou us what thou promisest us, if thou be of the truthful. He said, there have come upon you from your Lord abomination and wrath. Dispute you with me concerning names which you have named, you and your fathers. God sent not down for these any authority. Then wait, I am with you waiting. So we delivered him and those with him by mercy from us, and we cut off the root of those who denied our proofs and they were not believers. 765-72 The words, quote, and to Ard, their brother Hood, end quote, continue the force of 759, where we read, quote, and we sent Noah to his people, end quote. This means that Hood was also sent, that is, he received a commission from God. As we shall understand to be the default requirement, the call of the warner in this case is also to his own people. As in the case of Noah's people, the warner calls to God alone, indicating that the people of this community had also fallen into idolatry. Hood is rejected here by the ruling elite, the, quote, eminent ones in the text, which fact indicates that the elite was again the primary target of the message of warning, with them delivering an ad hominem attack against him. Hood is then challenged to do what is beyond his power, to initiate the punishments about which he is warning. The warner's response in this case is to challenge the inventions of the ruling elite and, having delivered his message, to announce that both he and they are waiting for the final outcome. God then delivers the messenger and those with him and destroys the rejectors. Segment 2 And to Ard, their brother Hood, he said, O my people, serve God, you have no God but he, you are only inventing. O my people, I ask of you for it no reward, my reward is only upon him who created me, will you then not use reason? 
And, O my people, ask forgiveness of your Lord, then turn to him. He will send the sky upon you in abundant rains, and increase you in strength to your strength, and turn not away as lawbreakers. They said, O Hood, thou hast not brought us clear evidence, and we will not leave our gods at thy word, and we do not believe thee. We say only that some of our gods have afflicted thee with evil. He said, I call God to witness, and bear you witness, that I am quit of that to which you ascribe a partnership besides him. So scheme against me altogether, then grant me no respite. I have placed my trust in God, my Lord and your Lord. There is no creature save he holds it by its forelock. My Lord is on a straight path. Then, if you turn away, I have conveyed to you that wherewith I was sent to you, and my Lord will make succeed you a people other than you, and you will not harm him at all. My Lord is custodian over all things. And when our command came, we delivered Hood and those who heeded warning with him by mercy from us, and saved them from a stern punishment. And those were awed, they rejected the proofs of their Lord, and opposed his messengers, and followed the command of every obstinate tyrant. And they were followed by a curse in the world, and on the day of resurrection, in truth, Ard denied their Lord, so away with Ard, the people of Hood. 11.50-60 The words, quote, and to Ard, their brother Hood, end quote, continue the force of 11.25, where we read, quote, and we sent Noah to his people, end quote, which again establishes the fact of Hood's commission. We find a reference to polytheism at 11.53. Hood states that he has no interest in personal gain for his efforts beyond the rewards that God grants. It is noteworthy that Hood does not call the people to a particular religion, and certainly not to anything resembling what the traditionalist calls Islam. Rather, supplication and sincere repentance to God are taken to be sufficient, and Hood asserts that blessings will follow repentance to God. The people call for physical proof of the destruction about which they have been warned and refuse to credit Hood's word without that evidence, remaining committed to their gods. However, as we shall see, the Qur'anic principle is not one of warners as miracle workers. Rather, they are men who deliver messages of warning according to a set protocol. The people of Ad claim also that their gods are the cause of Hud's actions. One notes here a parallel between what might be regarded as more primitive forms of idolatry and polytheism and modern manifestations of the same in psychology and psychiatry, within which ideologies a subject is deemed ill if he diverges too far from prescribed viewpoints approved by the dominant cult. Hood's policy after a certain point is to make full and uncompromising declaration of his dependence upon God alone, a standard feature of the protocol. Hood's role was only to deliver the warning, which policy was the great tradition in which Muhammad himself was following, as we have noted previously. A characteristic feature of the people of Ad was to oppose God's messengers and follow, quote, the command of every obstinate tyrant, end quote. The expression, every obstinate tyrant, indicates those who respect no moral consideration in either peace or war. Segment 3 Ad denied the emissaries, when their brother Hood said to them, Will you not be in prudent fear? I am to you a trustworthy messenger, so be in prudent fear of God, and obey me and I ask of you for it no reward. My reward is only upon the Lord of all creation. 
build you a proof on every prominence, amusing yourselves, and take you constructions that you might abide eternally, and when you lay hold, lay you hold as tyrants. So be in prudent fear of God, and obey me, and in prudent fear of him who has supplied you with what you know, supplied you with cattle and sons and gardens and springs. I fear for you the punishment of a tremendous day. They said, It is the same to us whether thou admonishest or be not of the admonishers. This is only the tradition of the former peoples, and we are not to be punished. And they denied him. Then we destroyed them. In that is a proof, but most of them are not believers. And thy Lord, he is the exalted in might, the merciful. 26, 123 through 140. Of additional note here are the facts that the people of Ard are reproved for glorying in their construction of high buildings and that they claim Hood's message to be mere legend. Segment 4 This segment cites the people of Ard and Thalmud as examples of communities known to have been destroyed by God. We look at Thalmud in the next chapter. Quote, and if they turn away, say thou, I warn you of a thunderbolt like the thunderbolt of Ad and Thamud, when the messengers came to them from before them and from after them, serve not save God. They said, If our Lord had willed, he would have sent down angels, so we are deniers of that wherewith you have been sent. Then as for Ad, they had waxed proud in the land without cause, and they said, Who is stronger than us in power? Had they not considered that God who created them, he was stronger than them in power? And they rejected our proofs. Then we sent upon them a howling wind in days of calamity, that we might let them taste the punishment of disgrace in the life of this world. And the punishment of the hereafter is more disgracing, and they will not be helped. 41, 13 through 16. Additional points here are Ard's and Thamud's denial of the messenger on the basis of faulty theology and their overweening hubris. Segment 5 And remember thou the brother of Ard when he warned his people of the wind-curved sandhills, and warners have passed away before him and after him, serve not save God, I fear for you the punishment of a tremendous day. They said, Hast thou come to us to delude us away from our gods? Then bring thou us what thou promisest us, if thou be of the truthful. He said, The knowledge is but with God, and I convey to you that wherewith I have been sent. But I see you are a people in ignorance. Then, when they saw it, as a wide cloud suddenly approaching their valleys, they said, This is a cloud bringing us rain. Nay, it is that which you sought to hasten, a wind wherein is a painful punishment, destroying everything by the command of its Lord. And morning found them, there was nothing to be seen save their dwellings. Thus reward we the law-breaking people. And we established them in that wherein we have not established you, and we gave them hearing and sight and hearts, but their hearing and sight and hearts availed them nothing when they rejected the proofs of God, and there surrounded them that whereat they mocked and we have destroyed what surrounds you of cities, and we expounded the proofs that they might return. Oh, that there had but helped them those whom they had taken as gods besides God as a means of approach. 
Nay, they strayed from them, and that was their falsehood, and what they invented. 46, 21 through 28. The additional information here is that the people of Ard were fully deluded away from any sensitivity to their impending destruction, choosing to see its first manifestations as a source of further benefit to themselves. It is clear also that they had achieved a high intellectual level, though this was of no avail to them as they ultimately remained devoted to false gods and reaped the reward of so doing. Segment 6. Ad denied. Then how were my punishment and my warnings? We sent against them a howling wind in a day of enduring calamity, removing men as if they were stumps of uprooted date palms. Then how were my punishment and my warnings? And we have made the Qur'an easy for remembrance. So is there any who will remember? 54.18-22 This segment rehearses key themes met previously. Segment 7 We are including this segment here for the sake of completion, as well as by way of gentle introduction to a textual feature which will be central to our analysis in due course, generic narrative summaries. Although Hood is not mentioned by name, the generic nature of the segment includes all messengers and means that, while the narrative details are elided, the principle must apply in the case of Hood also. Quote, there denied before them the people of Noah and the parties after them, and every community purposed against their messenger to seize him, and disputed with falsehood to refute thereby the truth. Then I seized them, and how was my retribution? 45. Thus the people of Ad can be known to have planned to kill Hud, though no explicit mention of the fact is made in the text. Characteristic sins of the Warner's people Idolatry taking a god other than God. Polytheism, worship of multiple gods. Preference for idolatry when presented with a call to God. Refusal to heed legitimate warning. Excessive cruelty. Unbridled hubris. Actions of the warner. Receives a commission from God told by God that the wrongdoers will be destroyed, approaches a people to which he belongs, uses the appeal, O my people, calls the hearers to serve God, calls the hearers to serve God only, exhorts the hearers to obey him, asserts that there is but one true God, calls the hearers to fear God, cites the favours of God, addresses himself to the elites of his time, responds to derision or accusation, stresses the message given by God, states that he is a warner or messenger, advances reasoned arguments, warns of punishment, anticipates punishment of a tremendous day, states that destruction is the decision of God alone states that he is nothing more than a mortal, cites previously destroyed peoples, accuses the hearers of invention of falsity, appeals to his hearers to wait as he is waiting, states that he seeks no reward from those to whom he is conveying warning, calls the hearers to seek forgiveness of God, states that his task is to convey message, challenges the unbelievers to do their worst, places his affair entirely in the hands of God, and comes with clear signs, writings or the illuminating writ. Actions of those the warner addresses. 
Accuse the warner of error. Fail to believe. Accuse the warner of insanity or sorcery. Claim the warner to be a liar. Reject God alone or appeal to their existing cult. Cite absence of custom as reason to reject. Dismiss arguments as ancient legends. Call for the punishments of God. Claim lack of evidence as reason to reject. Cite own gods as cause of Warner's actions. Deny, oppose or disregard the Warner. And plan to kill the Warner. Footnote, derived by means of generic narrative summary. We will examine this feature in detail in Chapter 8. To continue. Cite the Warner's mortality as a reason to reject. Interpret incipient destruction as blessings and await angels or the command of God to come to them. Other key features Appeal to the Qur'an as something which should be remembered. Reference to, quote, my punishment and my warnings, end quote. The conclusion of the matter God delivers the warner and those who believed with him. God annihilates those who reject the warner. The rejecters will go to hell. The idolater's cult fails them. It was said, away with. The deniers are surrounded by that at which they mocked. The conclusion of the matter entails a proof. And God does not wrong them, but they wronged their souls. Contemporary Echoes of Sins Characteristic of That Time We note the theme of tall buildings and the vanity associated with them. The most impressive buildings in any major city tend to be those of the dominant cult. Historically, those were the buildings of religion. Later, they were associated with kings. Today, they are dedicated to the materialistic cult, and owned by either businesses or banks. Idolatry and polytheism are standard today, as noted in Chapter 4. We might add that the modern god of psychology, combined with philosophies such as behaviorism, are employed to curb the natural impetus in man towards God, ascribing that impetus to names it has invented. These doctrines are rightly considered modern equivalents to the gods to which the people of Ard referred when rejecting Hud. On the theological front, today's main religious movements are often little more than elite-owned systems of control. They frequently promote ideologies and eschatological precepts which produce passivity, typically as in the case of Ard's assertions, with emphasis upon the need to await the intervention of some superior or mystical personality, with normal human responsibility to engage with the substance of what has been received by way of scripture, dismissed as insanity or simply elided as a possibility from the presentation. The present system is nothing if not tyrannical. Compare Quote, every obstinate tyrant, end quote. It seeks not only functional obedience, but is engaged in occupying, controlling and surveilling the minds of those it rules. It systematically starves swathes of the world while keeping the remainder in the grip of an economic vice. The delusional state of the people of Ard, whereby they initially perceive their incipient destruction as blessings for themselves, is writ large in the current age wherein unhinged entitlement in the form of positivism, solipsism, egoism and demands for unearned rewards and recognition have been normalised among the herd, so much so that many moderns remain little more than infants all their lives. The intellectual achievements of the people of Ard find an echo in the industrial and technological advances of our own age. There is nothing wrong with technological advancement when a society gives due credit to God. 
However, in our time, the ideology underpinning such advancement is termed progress, which itself is an idol whose precepts form part of the culture in which the population is trained. In this regard, we note that the achievements and insights attained by the people of Ard quote, availed them nothing when they rejected the proofs of God, and there surrounded them that whereat they mocked. End quote. Lastly, we note the unbridled hubris of the people of Ard. Compare quote, Who is stronger than us in power? End quote. The present cult has it that it represents the pinnacle of all achievement, that no previous civilization could rival it technologically, militarily, or in any other way. Meanwhile, cognizance of God's supremacy over all things is entirely elided from both its foundational myths and ongoing narrative about itself. <laughs>